We have come to Stuttgart, Germany for you to cover the car that stands for the Mercedes brand like nothing else. It's the Mercedes E-Class, of course, and now available as the recent E-Class facelift. And here on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. With Thomas in front of the camera and Jonas behind the camera, we're going to take a detailed look. The new exterior, interior, new features and infotainment, and of course the driving experience with a new engine as well, mild hybrid technology. And we'll also take a short comparing look to the Estate, the T model, which is also available once again as the all-terrain version. And a lot more. Behind us, by the way, the Mercedes Museum. Always worth a visit. Very interesting cars right there. But today, it's about the new one. So, please tune in in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. In the front we can see, yes, a new front grille. This is the avant-garde trim level. There is no entry level below that, so they start a little bit more upmarket. And you can see it has a wider stance now. It looks sportier, vertical fins, and also a whole different front grille form. There will also be the AMG line exterior, then with the diamond pin grille. And still, however, there's also the exclusive exterior and that will then feature the very classic front grille together with the standing upright Mercedes star. However, avant-garde and AMG line, the more modern variants, so to say. And these two also come with these power dome accentuations there on the hood. The classic exclusive line does not have that. In any case, the headlamps now are a little bit slimmer as for the housing. LED is standard and optional. You can also see them right here, the multi-beam LED also features more high beam function. They now differentiate the different models in their car lineup, not by the data running light. It was before, for example, C-Class 1, E-Class 2 stripe, S-Class 3 stripes. In future, it will be like this now, always one stripe, but then the dots below that, here are two dots for the E-Class, C-Class and one dot, and S-Class will then feature three dots. That's the new lighting logic, so to say. With the new off-road package, the new Mercedes E-Class facelift will also feature double portal axles. Wait a minute. Wrong car. 4 meters 92, 16 foot 1 or 194 inches is the length of the Mercedes E-Class sedan or also the T model, the Estate. Which is of course always available then with a different shape right there. This sedan here, the classic sedan shape with the round shoulder right there, dropping line. I think it's the most beautiful solution when you put the design dropping line on the height of the door handles right here, dividing in light and shadow. And by the way, yeah, the G-Class 6x6 behind us there for the special vehicle. Yes, there will be the all-terrain version of the E-Class. That one will still be available then with crossover wheel claddings right there. However, this one here, the really classic style and the all-terrain version also only available for the estate. Here, new aero wheels, 18 inch. You can see they're a little bit closed. It's better for the wind efficiency and it also has this unique styling. Talking about unique styling, there are two favorite colors for me in the Mercedes lineup. One is of course brilliant blue because that's the striking Thomas blue. You know the Kevin side blue is a little bit darker one. Brilliant blue is the really bright screaming out one but still very elegant and this one here the mountain gray magno with this matte finish so 
it really feels differently it looks differently it cleans almost itself you know like a lotus effect in the rain the only disadvantage is when you have small scratches you cannot polish that so always have to keep an eye on your precious belonging in this case there will be different suspensions available more to that very soon and of course also new engines more updates right there let's tune further into the details tell me which one would you go for sedan estate coupe convertible they all get somewhat the same facelift changes in the rear a clear design change before only coupe and convertible had these horizontal tail lamps and sedan or also estate were more vertical now for the whole model lineup more horizontal lamps and also with the new led structure on the inside so it definitely looks sleeker than before however critics could say that it almost looks like a you know a-class sedan or something from the rear so it's harder to differentiate the cars from the different size in the model lineup but i think if you directly compare them the sedan looks definitely a little bit you know sportier and more modern from the rear now however in the lower part here massive case of you know <laughs> of fake exhaust tips here these are really completely fake so i had to make it a little bit longer today because this is like a clear case for the uh, special forces unit of the autogefuel fake exhaust police and it also says here in the number plate sek well it's of course for e klasse e class but sek is also the sondereinsatzkommando in germany that's the like the swat team of the police so <laughs> maybe it fits in to the autogefuel sondereinsatzkommando for the fake exhaust tips well and then i wanted to talk about the suspensions because you start with the base suspension which now sits 50 millimeters lower for more wind efficiency again and the interesting thing is we've been driving this base suspension together with 20 inch wheels in a prototype vehicle in vegas and the comfort was superb and 20 inch with the base suspension would be like the least comfortable non-amg setup and it was still super comfortable and that really speaks for the vehicle optional you can get an adaptive suspension this increased the comfort even further and optional optional also equipped with this fellow here today the adaptive air suspension which gives you this carpet a ride you know really cool definitely but if you want to save some money you can easily stick with the base suspension and you'll be just fine and to show you even more variation first of all a silver vehicle and this one here is also the amg line so then we have all three front grills you can see here the diamond pin grill so this is my favorite front grill so to say but the new avant-garde grill is also very interesting and the amg line also has these power dome accentuations furthermore at this vehicle we have 19 inch wheels also in these new aero styles so new aerodynamic styles indeed they optimize the wind flow and I think this really nice look here again then the AMG 19 inch wheels this is, by the way also a plug-in hybrid so we can also later compare the trunk well and yeah there's yet another front grille and that is special with the all-terrain just available for the estate version for the T mod model and you can see here the all-terrain has this front grille with the horizontal fins too and with these gaps inside and of course this crossover look here already beginning with the black contrast in the lower part and we have it as a white vehicle here but also with the red one so we show you even more colors but even more interesting of course the all-terrain in the side profile and here first of all this is of course the estate different shape to the sedan and this is also the all-terrain version here with the crossover cladding and together in this case then so of course you can pick it you don't have to 20 inch amg wheels so <laughs> this off-road look but then one of the sportiest wheels i mean it has something special you know not necessarily logic but yeah style for sure so what do you think you like this all-terrain version here and this is how the normal estate looks like here for example with the exclusive line also with the classic mercedes star but then here not in the all-terrain plastic colliding look just with this you know continuing roof line right here the sedan of course always has some kind of more elegance but of course the real use of the all of you know both the all-terrain and the normal estate version is what we have on the inside and the interior part we'll also take a short comparing look
and they stayed from the rear. You could see here also the tail lamps, also no horizontal right there. Not a very spectacular look. The sedan, once again, a little bit more elegant from the rear, but again, more about the inside. And also massive fake exhaust, autogrifful fake exhaust police case, definitely. And the all-terrain here from the rear, <laughs> I'll crouch over. This is very interesting because there's an additional cover right here, a black one, the crossover cladding once again, and also this kind of off-road diffuser or cover style in the lower part. Engines, the main scheme here is electrification. So there are petrol engines, 2-liter 4-cylinder and 3-liter 6-cylinder. And of course the AMG, the 63, the 4-liter V8. And then diesels also 2-liter 4-cylinder and 3-liter 6-cylinder. And both for petrol and diesel, that's special here with Mercedes. So also for diesels, plug-in hybrid versions are available. And today we're going to test a very special engine that is not even out on the market at the time we're recording this video here. And let's now dig into the details. Because this here is the E350, 272 horsepower plus 15 horsepower electric boost, an optional additional, even more electric boost than for a very short time. So a mild hybrid technology, the strongest mild hybrid and the strongest two liter four cylinder turbo petrol engine. There will also be the E300, 258 horsepower with mild hybrid and the E200, 197 horsepower plus mild hybrid optional orbit drive. Then the 3 6 cylinder turbo petrol engine is the E450 with 367 horsepower. Then the E53, 435 horsepower and the E63, 571 or 612 SS model. And the plug-in hybrid version will be called E300E. It's a 2-liter 4-cylinder, that's then the PHEV. So, on the diesel side, 2-liter 4-cylinder, E200D, 160 horsepower, E220D, 194 horsepower. No mild hybrid for that. But there will be a new E300D, 265 horsepower, mild hybrid diesel, interesting. And the E300DE, the plug-in hybrid diesel. And then the 3-liter 6-cylinder diesels, E350D, 286 horsepower, E400D, 340 horsepower, orbit drive. And by the way, although the standard suspension now sits lower and gives you a little firmer ride, but still comfortable as we tested earlier, you can basically depick that and still go for the standard ride height as an option without any extra cost. The key, slim and light, hasn't changed but still beautiful. Keyless entry, put your hand on the outside to close on the inside and to open. Door closing sound. Yeah, that's nice and solid. Then inside of the doors, plush materials right there, here as well with nice leather red cover. Also new decor elements available here, for example, a matte wood. Very beautiful choice, open cell, so yeah very stylish this is the optional Burmester 3d surround system so expensive but so cool <laughs> and here you can see this here this comes out or goes in again depending on if you activate sound or not yeah a very fancy feature then you can see more of the new decal elements right here of course more to pick from also soft touch at the um, dashboard here at least a little bit it's, you know, something between hard and soft. Then one of the key features is the new steering wheel. There are two available, either this one with a closed structure, so to say. And then there's a new AMG steering wheel, which goes like this in two horizontal fins and has a gap in between. But what they have in common is, first of all, capacitive function. So for the updated Distronic, adaptive cruise control and also lane keeping assist, that you just touch the steering wheel and then the car still knows you're there. There are no false positives when running straight, 
that the car says, oh, keep your hands in the steering wheel, you're not there anymore. So capacitive, that's an important new function. And they also remove the physical buttons. They have this pads here now, and I think that looks less stylish and less quality wise you do get something of a haptical feedback you can also push that whole thing in I and mean, we see it's just basically one field but then the car knows where you are exactly with your finger hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. i can't say that i really like what they've done there so but i think we gotta have to live with it the amg steering wheel looks a little bit you know sportier definitely the styling is also not the problem but the handling rather here which is pretty cool a good feedback here also from the shifting pedals for the automatic gearbox these are really really fancy then the seats different seat forms available there for example of sports seats with the AMG line that ultimately come with dynamic microfiber on the inside and articulate leather on the outside this is the animal skin spec here at the moment but in the e-class mercedes offers a lot of choices for example also a fabric article mix Full Artico in different colors, beige, brown, black, and so on. So you can easily go for an animal free seat and even in different colors and different specs. That's all available. Then let's get inside. Typical E-Class is that, of course, we have a lot of comfort, even if we're tall. One meter is 86, <laughs> six foot one. Yeah, my size probably won't change until the rest of my life. Yeah, movie character. So here, <laughs> yeah. headroom still there although we have the panoramic roof here so there's a little bit more headroom if you leave that out and again you know it's a car to relax definitely you know what you get when buying an e-class in this case and you of course also get a little bit more comfort than you would get one in the c-class soon also more about the new changes because one of the other critical new things in the interiors is always digital no analog gauges anymore but they come in two different sizes soon more to that the rest is here, when we control the seat, we can also put just the upper part a little bit out like this. That's this part then right here. So this inside of the door control is, you know, nice to see when you're sitting here, but for reviewing, so tough to do. <laughs> and then another interior sidekick here, you can see the AMG steering wheel in the new style, flat bottom. And then you can see these two horizontal layers for the capacitive buttons. So you have basically the very same controls. It's just that they are visually split and it looks just a little bit sportier as we used to from the AMG steering wheels. I think it's a very, very nice design. Just again, the discussion about the capacitive button that remains the same. And by the way, in this interior, you can also see there's a dark wood insert here for the decor elements. Again, in an open cell matte style. Also a very interesting solution. Quite beautiful. And if you've already bought the sun, there are also the shades. And what I found so cool with this very equipped vehicle is also that we have a bright upper ceiling here. This, you know, even if you would not have the panoramic roof, makes the interior so bright. Now to the interior overview of this facelift. And before we talk about the new screen seal, let me just sum up this interior for you. Again, this was this design scheme of central purity. That's what behind it. So on the one hand, clear lines. On the other hand, some, you know, curved lines. And the ambient lighting is below that for the central experience. Very interesting. Then this cap here on top of the screens. So this is so fundamentally different, for example, to an Audi A6, which has this very clean German design language, almost Bauhaus style. But then this one here, definitely evoking more emotions, but some say it's overloaded. So it really depends on, but definitely between Mercedes and Audi design on the interior, I think that's like A and Z. In BMW, I think it's somewhat in the middle of that. Pretty interesting. Now, as this car was launched as a facelift, saw that and it was said, like, all comes digital now, no analog gauges anymore. And everyone was like, wow, it's always like this. And then, uh uh, there will be still extras, German premium manufacturers. So it starts with smaller screens, 10.25 inch, two times, so smaller than this. So, for example, also a taxi. Mercedes E-Class will get the smaller screens as standard and then optional these two times 12.3 inch and then you have it like this but both feature the MBUX system with the voice activation input and let's try some hey Mercedes 
may I help you? Drive me to Berlin. Starting route guidance to Berlin. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Open the sunroof. I'm sorry. Can you say that again, please? Open the sunroof. Hmm, that usually worked so far very well. Um, I don't know. Well, I guess it always I'm depends sorry, also on the web now. connection. So, like opening the sunroof usually works and so far always worked great with every week. It's like, well, like activating the head-up display. So, most of the time the system works very good. But you see it also has some its limits. Yeah, we've recently seen the Polestar 2 with the Google integration. That one worked even better. So, before I said this was among the best, the Tesla one is also very good. But the Polestar one with the Android integration is probably the best now and even leads this one here. Then rest of the interior. Here we still have some buttons left, for example, for the climate control. Good to have that still manual. Also, always a nice feature that the ambient lighting switches accordingly. When you put it to the blue, it goes a little bit bluish. And when you put it to the red, it you know appears then red for a little bit warmer. Then again, the matte wood decor. It's really cool that you don't have so much, um, you know, black piano lecker. Inductive charging is possible, and that now USB-C charging. Connection for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Adaptive cup holders. Then you have this trackpad here. You can use this one to control the screen, but you can also use the touch screen directly, of course. Driving modes. We'll talk about that when we drive the car. You can see it's one with the air suspension because you can pump it up, y'all. <laughs> and then this split armrest right here with now two USB C chargers underneath and some space. So the left instrument screen is not touch. It's the only thing that is not touch here, but there's basically touch at the steering wheel here to um, pick up the phone, for example, and to, um, to cancel it. Then the volume button um, you can slide it up like this but good thing is when you just press it here in the lower part you mute it or unmute it again so and also when you just press in the upper part it's also then the mute button so yeah i mean that's i mean it doesn't feel too bad you know but the buttons before just came a little bit more natural so to say in the top part then here there's another possibility to control the screen on the right or to go back again there were these touchpads before um yeah i think that's not the super big change on the left side then with your left thumb you can control the left screen because that's not with touch home and also the cruise control is here on the steam room. so i think we will get used to it and for these capacitive buttons i think they have a very good haptical feedback so it's not as bad as I originally thought, but still, I was more a fan of the gauges they had before on the steering wheel. And now, I said the AMG steering wheel looks a little bit sportier, and this one here now has a big, you know, layer right here, and then there's this gap here in the lower part. And you know, remember that from the S class, the initial steering wheel from the S class, where someone said it looks like a clown's face, and then you always saw a clown's face. So either skip this few seconds now, or I'm just telling you now, if you look at this gap here in the lower part, what do you think could that be? Yeah, and then you'll always see it again. I'll leave the rest to your imagination. Now these new gauges here, 12.3 inch, left side, and with my left thumb I can control this. You can also put the map here, for example. It says here Mercedes-Benz Werk Unter Türkheim, so that's the main plant in Unter Türkheim, is the, you know, city part of Stuttgart and like this you can also change it have the map all over the place so they are very clear to read all the displays here you can see also for the mild hybrid system says EQ power or charge you can see when you can recuperate from this mild hybrid system or when you get a little boost of it and you can also switch everything you want to see here and for example also go for a different style this is a sports gauge but you can also go, for example, with the classic gauges, which are fitting a little bit more to the E-Class scheme. Or oh, what's your take on that? Redundant controls here for the screen. So either where I touch, then the lower trackpad is possible, 
or also with my right thumb on the steering wheel and they all do the same and I mean why not so everyone can pick the favorite way of controlling this here. The GPS looks quite cool and is also responsive enough. Here the Neckar, that's the river that flows through Stuttgart city. You know, Stuttgart in the, you know, south of Germany. Then back to the main menu. For example, we have the Apple CarPlay mounted right here. You can connect new devices. That's, for example, the iPhone X, but there's also the hotkey here. And it doesn't use all the way of stream. I think it's definitely enough like this. And of course, that's the thing I was actually waiting for. Just the end of the song. Wow. <sighs> what a great surround sound. One of the shortest but most effective music tests with the end, just with the you know, piano sounds here of that song. Wow. I mean, it's one of the best sound systems that is out there. No doubt about that. So expensive, but really worth it when you can actually, you know, <laughs> uh, still afford with the expensive E-Class to go for it. Comfort features here, by the way, you can go for that. It's again an option. For example, with the seat massage here, also together with seat heating, the seat massage they offer here in the E-Class is really superb. So meanwhile, I'm not sure if there's a serious reason to step up and go for an S-Class. The E-Class drives better, is so comfortable with the air suspension, it's such a soft ride. Um, yeah, ambient lighting is always a great thing. Of course, you pick Ocean Blue, which is Thomas Blue, and the brightness. What is this? Come on, all the way up again, right? And one of my other totally useless but cool features. Here, one of my favorite features. The Burmester sound system with the additional speaker here that goes in and out if you have tuned up the music. Yay! Or if you go for the mute button, Goodbye, speaker. See you soon. My name is James. Welcome to my sedan. You're my guest for the day. Here it is. <laughs> the rear compartment. Yeah, I'm still Thomas, by the way, if you have tuned in the very first time to Auto Gufu. I hope you didn't. Well, same styling here in the rear. That looks bright here. I mean, the color is cool. And again, you can also get a bright Artico. So if you want that style, you can also do it animal free. Panoramic roof here also for the rear. That's also a nice thing. We can also open the front one very soon. Here again with a nice decor element. So many speakers for the Burmester 3D surround system and also soft touch at the rear doors. Finally a car that has that. So what about the rear legroom? Of course this hasn't changed with the facelift. And it's no problem. There we go. The bench is not too long, but it's still comfortable. You know it all from driving a taxi. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's this vicious saying, like when I want to drive an E-Class, I drive taxi. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, it's it's definitely funny, yes. Um, but of course, it's also, you know, what's, what's also behind it is that it's not that easy to afford an E-Class. And so, of course, it's easier to afford a taxi ride. Then here, the headroom. It's also okay still for the sedan. If you have the T model, the estate, then it goes a little bit further, so it's even a little bit easier then. And here, this is also one of the key speakers here for the 3D surround system here mounted on the top part. And indeed, it sounds a little bit different from sedan to estate if you really listen carefully. But of course, it will be great in any of these vehicles. Then we have Isofix at the outside seats each there and there we cannot flip them from here we have to do it from the trunk to fold them down then the middle part this is a skid we can do that from here and then there's cup holes right there adaptive and some cubby hole and then in the middle part there's this tunnel for rigidity but also then for all-wheel drive versions or of course just the rear-wheel versions, because this car here is rear-wheel driven only. USB-C devices now with the facelift, another 12 volt power supply, and also a rear climate unit. I can't stop hugging this Magno gray matte paint. Good boy, good boy. <laughs> well, they also had to redesign the 
rear boot lip because of the new tail lamps right there. You can see there's then a split between. And so this also looks a little bit sleek and more elegant right now. So that's the opening below that. Somewhat electric opening, typical here for a sedan. More flexibility than with the T model with the Estate. And the normal measures here. Let's begin with width. So width is a meter here and even a little bit more than a meter right there. And the normal length is 1 meters and 15. Below here, by the way, you can have a shopping basket, foldable, very interesting. Let me also give you an advantage, example here with the cabin trolley, like this. It also fits here in a vertical way, no problem. And then we can fold the seats here, but we just unleashed them. Isengard unleashed, so and here. Well, in this case, we cannot push it through with our luggage, so we have to go around and then flip it right here like this, fold it, <laughs> one day I'll learn it. So, and then, let's see the length to the seats. I would, you see the step right here, and then this is two meters, so that's of course pretty long. And let's compare E300E, this is the plug-in hybrid, petrol plug-in hybrid and this is just a sample case but then it also shows us there's this step in the trunk then and this is of course a massive disadvantage for the plug-in hybrid so i really like plug-in hybrids and they can be very useful depends on the use case of course but here both you know in the c and in the e class when you go for the plug-in hybrid versions in the trunk yeah you do lose significant trunk height you have to know that and now the estate trunk with the electric tailgate right here. This is, of course, so much more practical than with the sedan. Interesting here that this cover here goes up and down electrically. A very nice solution. This is here a normal combustion engine, so we have a little of space underneath. And, of course, the access to the trunk is so much better. The length, however, is pretty much the same. 1 meters 15. But the width here is all the way wider. So here almost in this, you know, back area, wider than the meter. So this is where the sedan is a little bit slimmer here and here. And then in this front area, this is also one meter and 20. So that's of course way better. And the height here, I mean, below the cover, um, this is not too high, you know, when you are below the cover here, this is here about like between 40 and 50 centimeters. But the crucial thing is, when you are not using the cover, then you have here 75 centimeters available. That's the crucial thing. And of course, even better that we can fold the seats from here with this release function. That's of course pretty cool. And once again, it's two meters, but this is the big advantage then of the estate. And the plug-in hybrid version of the estate. And once again, also here in the trunk, this massive step and once again, I really like electrification, you know, for more sustainability, but ah, this is really a big downside here. Hmm. So you really have to be okay with this. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the E-Class facelift. Here, augmented reality, you can see in display, that's nothing new with the face. Oh, that's a... Uh, that was the S-Class Camo vehicle with camouflage, new only S-Class, soon an autogrophy as well, of course. So augmented reality shows me, then well, it did show me with the right arrow in this projected camera image that I should turn right. This is definitely a helpful feature. I can also have the map here in the left instrument cluster, but I have the speed mountain here for you, also with a different gauge style that you can check out the speed. This new petrol engine here with the MF system, so I can see this EQ charge. So there's recuperation possible, and when I just um, you know, lift the throttle, then the recuperation is already active. Here, this is the Daimler headquarters. Famous German model of Konzernzentrale. Yeah, which means headquarters. <laughs> yeah, sounds so German-ish, right? So, and at the same time, we also get an EQ boost or power. So when we really push the throttle, the electric 
um, you know, electric savings basically boost us even further, we'll soon also test it. Let's first see what minimum consumption we can score with that. Then we have the air suspension right here. Then once again, augmented reality. This really helps you in tricky situations where they're like, hmm, what is the GPS meaning? Is it like this or the next one or was it before? And this makes it definitely a little bit clearer. So cool thing. And in the new S class, there will also be like an equal function, but then in the head up display where at the moment I rather see only arrows and stuff and not this augmented you know, reality function. So this car equipped with the air suspension, but I told you earlier, even with a normal suspension, the E-Class ride is very soft and comfortable, even better with the depth suspension and the air suspension. Of course, at some point when you need to replace it, the cost will be higher, but it's not that it breaks after, you know, after two years or something. So, but just, you know, when you take it into account and have it for a very, very long time, if it plays a role, However, the air suspension of an E-Class is also something very special because you have such an awesome soft ride. Just when you start riding and it, no, it's not like it shakes out of control, but a very controlled, nice shake you have there. And yeah, I always say it feels like, kind of, like, an, like an air carpet. So here, by the way, the run of road protection is done with brake intervention and I don't like that here when, when like here, this here see here I mean the car does it very well but it's not with steering intervention but it's with brake intervention and this can be a little bit surprising at times however if you set the cruise control with the assisted driving mode then you have an active system you increase the speed also right here now to 100 kilometers an hour and now actually I'm supposed to keep my hands on the steering wheel but with the capacitive function now, so I don't need to like, hey, I'm there. It's enough when I have the hands on the steering wheel. And see here, now the lane is actively being kept by steering intervention. That's again the difference. The active lane keeping assist against the run of road protection. So, you know, how the systems work differently. And now it says, touch the steering wheel. And once again, even one hand is enough. You see here, capacitive function and it's realizing I'm still here. That's really cool. Now here the ambient lighting and when I put it warmer, then you can see, wow, this red ambient lighting. What an awesome, I mean, it's such a simple feature and here colder again, it's all blue. Such an easy feature, but so cool. And I mean, makes such a pleasure experience from that, really amazing. I have a good view to the head up display, by the way. Here in the tunnel, the car is again, super silent. 100 kilometers, 60 miles in the tunnel, and again, a silent ex experience. If we would close the upper shade from the roof, it would be maybe a little bit more silent even, but this is already a very good result. And the overall driving experience in E-Class is always very, very calming. This also counts due to design, but then again, also with the soft suspension setup. And the Audis, for example, even a base A6 is set on the sporty tone and the same counts for the BMW 5 Series. So the base Mercedes E-Class is definitely more on a calm luxury side, whereas BMW and Audi more try to master the compromise of sportiness and comfort. And they're all good, no doubt about that. And when you jump then here in an AMG model, then it becomes pretty stiff, almost rough. So with Mercedes, between their non-sport and sport models, there's the widest span, you know, the biggest difference. Whereas the Audi and BMW sport models, this more goes in a transition, you know, than sportier, 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 sportier. And here it's like non-sporty, gap, sporty. Yeah, different philosophy and just, you know, matter of preference. Here, once again, this is also what this, made, what this car is made for. Cruise control, 100 km an hour good lane keeping assist, active steering assist in a smooth way, really good. Then the noise insulation, and you can just imagine of rolling here hours and hours and hours, enjoying this awesome sound system and so on. So um, what a great experience. What is also a case by the way with the Mercedes E-Class is you have always a good view to the front. The hood goes, you know, falls down there, 
this different experience in the BMW 5 Series and the Audi A6 where the front hood looks a little bit more, you know, yeah, stronger, so I would say. Here, blind spot monitor, red triangle in the side mirror, also one of the very good features. The autonomous emergency braking assistant has been updated as well, now also works with crossing traffic. And as I said earlier, the Distronic has been updated, keeps um, you know emergency corridors for emergency recalls into account when you are with um, yeah, just a little bit on the brakes when we see speed cameras. <laughs> emergency corridors, that corridors into account when you are in a traffic jam, for example, and realize if you are on the right or in the left lane. That's you know uh, definitely very interesting as well. Now when we're rolling downhill here, once again, a little bit charging up from this mild hybrid engine. It won't have the same effect as we were driving the plug-in hybrid version, you know, but still it will have somewhat an effect on the fuel economy. Um, this is also one of the most sophisticated mild hybrid systems that Mercedes is offering. This engine starts in Germany actually, and then will be re later rolled out to different markets and not only in the E-Class, at least you know to markets where you get two liter four cylinder petrol engines for an E-Class. That's not the case in um, you know not the case in every market. However then it might be that for example you know for example when this one doesn't come in the US to the US in the E-Class it will come for the C-Class then you know because they will use the same engine right here also for different models. And of course, why not all manufacturers do that and it all only makes sense. Now we're getting off and heading a little bit out to the countryside to test some driving dynamics because good thing here with the air suspension is also that it's adaptive and you can pick the different driving modes. The new steering wheel, by the way, yes, the design could be a little bit irritating, definitely. This, you know, ball here in the middle for the airbag and the, and the horn. Yeah, I have to get used to that, but the grip here at the side is actually quite good. You know, the um, the form, how you touch the steering wheel, that's quite nice. There's also an AMG steering wheel available, as I told you earlier, which looks a little bit sportier, also has a different form. And that is also, should there yeah, should also again be possible to get them with, with dynamic or um, microfiber. Um, these capacitive buttons here to use it while driving, it's somewhat okay. I would have imagined it is worse because the haptical feedback is actually quite good. There's also a nice clicking sound. So four haptical buttons or capacitive buttons. Mm, yeah, sorry, not haptical buttons, capacitive buttons with a haptical feedback. So that's the way to take it right. It's one of the best I've experienced yet. But I still think that the ones before that were had this, you know, metal-like image and touch to it, like metal knurled knob. Yeah, they were just mm, a little bit more natural to use in, in the overall feeling, I think, at least. But the cruise control is very well to control to increase the speed and decrease the speed and also to control the gauges here while driving, for example. Here in a normal driving mode, it's not that the car is shaking up because it has this soft suspension, but still, it evens out the bumps so well. 18-inch wheels are also a great compromise. You already have a nice look, but not too big. So when you have smaller wheels, you always have a little bit more comfort. So the setup we have here would be one of the most comfortable you can get in E-Class, but overall also any vehicle suspension-wise. So here, not the biggest wheels with an E-Class air suspension, one of the best you can get, actually. So uh, yeah, that's... That's really very, very cool. And by the way, so far I've been driving like very calmly and the fuel economy figure is here at about 7.7 .7 liters on one kilometers. Also something I would have expected for a car of that size. And the MF system brought the consumption a little bit down. So about eight liters on one kilometers is somewhat realistic. I wouldn't say that this is so much better than with the 3 liter 6 cylinder because the 3 liter inline 6 cylinders they've been using here is you know, it's also a very good system. Now also available with the MF system so the downsizing might not play the biggest effect. Um, yeah, but of course the entry price for the 2 liter 4 cylinders 
is always lower than for the six cylinder engines and also lower weight of course you know have to take that into account as for the driving modes by the way um, there is individual you can pick everything yourself then sport plus sport comfort but also eco and in the eco mode this sailing or coasting effect is increased that when you're just rolling for example the rpms drop down the car is just rolling and you know coasting not using um, um, any more fuel depending on the situation of course then throttle input is being reduced actually once again to favor the fuel economy and exactly the opposite would then be the sports mode and we'll use that one when we get out of this you know, rural town right here and then in the sports mode the rpms will turn up higher shifting up later you can always use the shifting pedals which are also newly designed here and they have very good um, grip and you know very good haptical feedback so oh what's that oh it's a kia stinger an interesting design in this matte gray paint we also have a Kia Stinger review, by the way. We just had it in the red car. You can check it out as well. But always nice to see, like, you know, some special cars on the road, such as, which are not that, you know, just not that often on the road. Here, when driving, by the way, 50 kilometers an hour, it's it's almost like you're walking with headphones with noise with no, noise cancellation, you know. It's so super silent in this vehicle. But they don't use noise cancellation. We had cars that use noise cancellation. It's very silent, but a different feeling. This active noise cancelling. Sometimes you feel a little bit like you would, like someone would, um, you know, like steal the sound next to your ears. And here with a, you know, with a passive noise cancellation, it comes more natural. This you know, uh, this silent experience. Steering wheel here, by the way. See, um, you have to steer quite a lot with Mercedes. That means it's a little bit more comfortable just when running straight, also with this long wheelbase. Audi and BMW more have a, you know, even stronger Audi, a more progressive approach to the steering. That means you have to steer less. I wouldn't say they're less, you know, like this, less stable on, on motorway rides running straight or so. But here maybe a little bit more relaxed when running straight and then you have to steer a little bit more. However, the steering definitely still feels very, very natural. In the head-up display, by the way, I can see the speed, the current speed, and also some GPS info, like basic error infos or some inter uh, intersections approaching um, when, when the next intersection you know, is, is being marked. Now, outside this town, I'll go to the sports mode, and the RPS, RPMs are going higher, and we can also show you some acceleration. And here now, going 40 kilometers to, let's see how, you know, how close we get to this car. Here also no more straight road. Let's see about the power. They will with this additional EQ power boost. Let's see. And 80. That was pretty cool. Now here a little bit stronger in the corner. Of course, this doesn't feel sporty at all here in the basic E-Class with the air suspension. But there you already saw, even though we have the soft air suspension, it doesn't lean too far into the corner because here in the sports mode, the air suspension is also stiffer. You see here, you wouldn't guess that it is a soft air suspension. And then we go back to the comfort mode, for example, and it shakes a little bit more and you now gives us some softer feedback. But the good thing is you can really finely tune it. But again, difference now again, the Audi A6 or the BMW 5 Series, as base models, they definitely feel sportier. And meanwhile, I think Audi comes really closer to the BMWs than as for the as for the sportiness so sporty or as for the base uh, base versions not uncomfortable at all but definitely the normal setup here for the e-class is more like i don't need to race i just want to enjoy i want to relax don't need to re race these guys i just you know enjoy the great sound for example on the interior and go a little bit slower in the corners and so on and so on and i think you know, this market differentiation is just fine because then, once again, it's not good or bad. It's just then the matter of preference. But the engine here, as for the performance, this was also pretty good. And you also saw that this EQ power boost we gave us. And at least you cannot recuperate that much, but at least you can do something. And you know that some energy is at least, you know, not completely 
lost, so to say. So overall, I think quite good impressions from this new engine. I wouldn't expect fuel economy wonders from it. The three liter six cylinder will still be better to drive. Yes, I mean, the six cylinder is a great drive. Not necessarily in the agility because, you know, when six cylinders are spinning, so to say, you have more force that is going in the, in the, in the forward direction. And so the less cylinders you have, the more agile the car will be, basically. But the six cylinder, when you just accelerate, you have a little bit more sonorous sound, you keep it with lower RPMs, it just feels a little bit more sovereign when driving than with the four cylinder. Well, you do have the electric boost right here, but it's nice to have it, but it doesn't change everything, so to say. Here now again would be a typical situation. I go back to the comfort mode to enjoy the soft ride, and I just let the car roll. Oh, let, let, me, let me go to the eco mode like this. So here, for example, I, I I felt like you know how the car basically decoupled. Now we're just rolling and coasting, and next then here 50 kilometers an hour, charging also here in the EQ. Now on the brakes charges even more. So I think it's a very interesting system. That was a GLS GV, what is it? Not a speed camera, but we were all good with the speed. So, and I can, oh, look at that. Vintage Mercedes, what's the 230? What a beautiful vehicle, you know? Yeah, I mean, this, um, it's so cool to drive modern cars because they're so silent, they're so easy to drive. But just design-wise, you know, with these vintage vehicles, they were so more, so much more unique, you know? Don't you think so as well? So I think I would rather go like buy them design-wise, not necessarily to, to drive them, you know, all day and so on. So I think here the E-Class, once again, master of comfort in the segment, not master of sportiness. Then you would go to the AMG model, but I think really, yeah, with the AMG models you do lose comfort, so I would rather go for a base E-Class or then, you know, with one of the soft suspensions, non-AMG, if you really appreciate the comfort. And if you want to combine more sportiness and comfort, then maybe you'll be happy with the Audi and the, and the BMW. And just when you want this, you know, sportiness without comfort, then you're just fine again also with the AMG model with a very stiff suspension setup. Once again, augmented reality here also in the city. That's an interesting piece of art in this roundabout. Hmm. Yeah, there's this, <laughs> there's this saying in Germany. We say like, is das Kunst or kann das weg? That's like, is that art or is that or is it trash? Like, you know, or can it be like thrown away? Is it art or can it be thrown away? <laughs> Maybe in there there's like a, a similar saying in, in your language then. So once again, out of the countryside, Accelerating here, using all the EQ power we've been storing before, and one more, you know, quicker corners. Let's put it to the sports mode. So one thing once again, a little bit more support now from the air suspension, but still in the sport mode, the air suspension evens out this ride very well. So, I've no matter what we have on the ground there. There's nothing, you know, which is like damage in the roads or something which would come through my lower back or something. The air suspension really evens that all out. But I told you earlier, also the other suspensions that are available for the E-Class, they're all very, very good. So I'm always a fan of giving you the best price performance of a vehicle. And the E-Class can be so, so expensive with all the extra equipment we have here. And I think happy car customers also appreciate a good price performance ratio and that's usually more like a mid trim vehicle so to say. The car manufacturers always equip these vehicles so much to show off everything they got. We always ask for mid trim vehicles if possible but most of the time this is actually not possible then. But we show them of course always when we can. Once more, last time the augmented reality here was showing us the way. Always good also for roundabout that you really know which um, you know exit you take here in this roundabout. By the way, once more here with the slalom alike, normal driving mode, smooth steering. That was you know, there was sports mode, sports mode again, sports mode here, comfort, then a little bit softer from the steering reaction. 
but all again yeah this vehicle is so evolved over the years it also comes back to our initial thesis this car is what the mercedes brand is all about and even with that facelift still is And now to our conclusion for today with the new Mercedes E-Class facelift. We've shown you all three new front grills and no matter which you pick, the Avant-Garde, the AMG line or the classic exclusive line, they all look somewhat sportier so the car looks sleeker than before. Also due to this new rear with the horizontal tail lamps, you can argue it more looks now like a bigger A-Class sedan so maybe less unique in one way but it's really different when you saw the first pictures and now seeing the car in reality it really looks sleeker and sportier than before the interior still a great sensual luxurious interior and with the new steering wheels they look quite fancy definitely the amg line looks or in the true amg models as well looks a little bit better even with this split horizontal fins in the steering wheel However, the capacitive buttons, four capacitive buttons, they give you good feedback, but still, I found the ones that we had before, the classic ones on the steering wheel, just a little bit better and easier to control, especially while driving. So, when you have some changes in the car, it's not always that everything is better than before. Hmm. The screens actually make a good impression, two different sizes, now all digital analog is gone, and especially important to have the new MBUX system in the E-Class as well with a better voice input and so on. So this is definitely a step forward. In general, from driving, the Mercedes E-Class, always a very luxurious ride, a very soft ride as well, especially here with the optional air suspension we had today, but even a base suspension will just do fine. And it's one of the most silent cars on the market as for the noise insulation as well. Well, and then about the new mild hybrid petrol engines, they are actually a quite good alternative even to a diesel, I have to say, because of the new partic particle filters, technologies and so on. The diesels seem to have increased the consumption, whereas the petrols went down with the mild hybrid technology. So also for this new MF we tested today, we scored some decent fuel economy. So seems to be that these engines are the ones to go for in the future. Plug-in hybrids, also very interesting of course, but so far in this E-Class generation, they reduce the trunk space too much actually. So, looking forward to your feedback to the Mercedes E-Class facelift. We also have a Mercedes E-Class Coupé video for you from the facelift. And tell us, which other versions would you like to see in the full review in the future? Maybe an E-Class all-terrain, this off-road looking estate. Just a glimpse of that today, but maybe in a full review in the future. Tell us in the comments and see you next time.